Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Bayer Crop Science and CNMC. I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. Here today for an episode of Wheat School with Troy Basaraba of Bayer, your technical solutions agronomist. Yes. And we're going to be talking about T3 fungicide application timing, but more specifically the best management practices around it. You mentioned that you have a list of four things that growers should be looking out for. Yeah. What are those? There, there's kind of like, there's when you start thinking about fungicides and wheat and and, and doing a, a good job and, and being diligent and trying to get the best value out of your fungicide, there's four things that I kind of like to keep in the back of my head. And the first thing is, is know your enemy. So it, by the enemy, I mean like what diseases are you going after? So is it fusarium? Is it leaf spotting diseases? Is rust blowing in uh, from the States? Um, what's your history with it? Have you had these things on your farm before? Is so? Is the infection levels like you know are are we are we set up that we may have these again? So understanding what you're going after first off. Second thing is is knowing your crop. So what is your wheat variety? Like a lot of the wheat varieties now have got a lot better uh, genetic resistance packages to a lot of these diseases. So understanding what your uh, resistance levels are on leaf spots and, and fusarium stuff like that. Knowing your stage of it, like we're, we're standing in this one right here and this has changed a lot over the last three days. Uh, a couple of days ago was that flag leaf stage, now the heads have emerged, like you know, keeping track of your plant health, all that sort of stuff. Uh, third thing is understanding your fungicide. So what diseases does your fungicide go after? What are your limitations in terms of like your application window, all that other sort of stuff? Is there anything from, uh, from an application standpoint that a grower has to be diligent of or be mindful of uh, to make sure that he's getting the, the best job out of it? Um, and then the last thing is, is when you actually get into the sprayer and get going across the field is the whole application thing. So understanding things like droplet size, which what size of droplet do we want to target to use, your ground speed, your water volume, boom height, you know, all the things that you can do personally in the cab to get the best value out of it. Because we could have the crop at exactly the right stage and we could be all set up, like, you know, the environment could be warm and humid, all set up for disease. But then if we get in the cab of the thing and if we just hammer down and fly across the crop and the boom's way up in the air, you know, are you getting 40% value out of uh, out of your fungicide product and stuff like that. So those are all kind of the things that I kind of like to keep in, in my head when we when you start to look at about setting up for going after uh, you know disease in, in wheat at this time. So let's dive a little bit deeper. If you are coming out to your field, what is something that growers should, what's the, the very first thing that they should be looking at? And let's go into that in a little bit more depth. What does that look like? Okay, first thing is, is we have, you can do this yourself. There's lots of crop scouts um, available at, at various ag retailers. There's people like myself in, uh, from the ag chem industry and stuff like that that can help as well too. And like I said, the first thing is understanding your crop. Mm -hmm. So what stage are we at? Um, you know, is there leaf disease coming in? And that's just, it's just getting out of the truck and coming after. You can see with this stand right here, we got a little bit of leaf disease kind of down in the bottom parts of the canopy. But then up here, you, when you start looking at the flag leaves, you know what, our flag leaves are generally pretty clean. Mm -hmm. um, say for example, if we were seeing like a leaf rust infestation blow up from the States, like your flag leaves could literally get littered with rust within a day or two. And then you got to pull the trigger quick and make that decision. In this case right here, you know, you're looking, our flag leaves are pretty good. The heads have started to emerge, they're getting up and they're getting to a point now where it's going to make it easier for the, for, the, for the grower to apply it on the heads. Because that's the other thing that you want. Uh, from a staging standpoint is when you start looking at this is if you're going after and putting fungicide on your head you want to make sure that head is up and nicely accessible so that it's easy for the spray application to do it. So when I'll, I'll just pull this guy out this is a tiller but as your weed head emerges and this is a classic example right here the weed head will emerge out and at this stage right here yes he's emerged so you do have the potential to start applying to hit the head but you can see the sheath is kind of covering up part of his head. The flag leaf is running interference and stuff like that. So ideally, this is still a little bit too early on that. But then as soon as that weed head first emerges, and this is, would be the start of the fungicide application window for a lot of products. Um, it's emerged, so you can see right here, that flag leaf is still kind of running a little bit of interference mm -hmm. on that. 
So what I would like to see is you wait a couple of days and then you start to see that head extension up from that flag leaf right here. You get a couple inches of separation. So now you got a clear shot at that. And then usually once your weed head starts to flower, like as soon as you see that first flower in the head, that is in my opinion, like ground zero. So if, if all of your wheat in the field was, was just starting to flower, that's, that's the ideal window for it. Now we realize that that's not possible. The whole field's, field's not gonna be the same. It's not, right? Um, but that's kind of like, that would be the, the target timing at least anyways, and for that. So, you know, when you start to see those heads emerge and get out like here, that's kind of like your two to three day warning. Mm -hmm. And then you can just kind of try and time it and, and watch and see how it advances and then time your spray uh, application accordingly. And then at what point is it too late? I think once you get to the point where you like your head is fully flowered to the point that the, that the, you know, the flowers are all kind of falling off. You know, once the flowers are all kind of completely gone, that's getting into like the tail end of the window um, and stuff. There has been a decent amount of work done over the last few years that even showing that, you know, while we like to see just that first flower is kind of like your best timing. If you're still applying on a wheat head that's fully flowered, kind of like this guy right here, mm -hmm. you're still getting really, really good um, levels of, 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 efficacy, of efficacy out of your fungicide and stuff. So if you see a fully headed flower or fully headed wheat head, that's okay. You're, yeah. you're still there. Once you start seeing all the flowers down on the ground across all your wheat heads, then that's probably more a little bit too late you're not yes. gonna be making your money back so let's actually talk about the economics behind it how much are growers looking at saving if they're hitting it at the right time making sure you know if they're if they're hitting those four things that will it'll depend on your variety and it will depend on the disease level that's in your crop right now it it doesn't take much when you start looking at um you know simple roi economics it's the cost of your fungicide, it's the cost of applying it across your field as well too. That's kind of like your total outlay. So, you know, it's as, while we always want to make money, we still got to focus on kind of the break even aspect. Right. So how do you break even? One, you save your yield. Um, so that's simply, simply bushel spraker, and that's easy to calculate. Um, but the other thing is, and maybe it's, it's a little bit more, um, a little bit tougher or a little bit more challenging is, is just the quality of the green. So in the case of, say, for example, if it costs you 25 bucks to put a fungicide on uh, and apply it across your field, right? And if wheat's six bucks, then you need four bushels per acre return um, to, to pay for itself, right? Anything over and above that, you're making money. But if, say, for example, if you get to the point where you've saved a massive fusarium infection, mm -hmm. right? And if you had an untreated that got downgraded because of FDK counts at the elevator, um, all of a sudden now it's like, yeah, maybe you only save two bushels per acre, but you got an extra X amount of dollars per bushel because of you got a better grade or save quality and all that other sort of stuff. So all those kind of come into play um, when trying to think about that. And that will depend, like I said, the genetics, if you have like a, a, a moderately resistant variety to fusarium versus a moderately susceptible or susceptible, all that kind of comes into play. The only way to truly get a real good gauge on the value of your fungicide is to leave that check strip in the field, something that's mm. not sprayed. So then you can go back and you can gauge and you can do that either visually or you could actually weigh it off, um, all that other sort of stuff. But if you don't have that untreated check strip, then you, you may think you'd be doing good, but you don't really kind of have that true benchmark in there at the same time. Right. How big of a check strip would you recommend for growers? I think it's, that's kind of depends on a grower's comfort level. Mm -hmm. Some guys are okay shutting the boom off for 50, 100 feet. So they can go in and even just see visually and stuff like that. Um, for some of the more analytical ones out there, like maybe they'll shut, you know, half of the sprayer off and do a full length of the field and then put it through the yield monitor and the combine. So I think it's, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what you, what you could set it up as. And it just kind of depends and some of that will be based on historical experience as well too. I know guys that have done check strips for years and they see it pay off time and time and time again. So now they're at the point where the, the technology has proven itself to them. They don't need to do it. They're comfy right. with it. They know that it's providing them a benefit. Other ones, you know, you maybe get into a little bit of a drier environment, may leave part of a boom off somewhere and, and then you'll find out and understand. But that, that can vary for each grower. So. That's great. Well, thank you very much, Troy. And that was Troy Basaraba on Real Agriculture.